Yellowstone supervolcano, 111 quakes recorded across the park, and the magnitude 6.5 nearby and swarm still continuing, is the supervolcano awakening. Many have commented after the 6.5 nearby in Idaho and craters of the moon, saying, is this a harbinger of what's happening coming towards Yellowstone? We had a 5.7 just south uh, west of Yellowstone in Salt Lake City, and the swarm still ongoing, 5.7 that rocked Yellowstone. Then we had a 6.5 a few days after that, uh, the um, night between March 31st, April 1st, and a, sw a swarm still ongoing there. So what's going on here? And that's what uh, a lot of people are worried about. So the Yellowstone National Park, according to uh, Yellowstone Obs uh, Volcano Observatory, was rocked by 111 quakes in March, including two clusters of earthquake swarms. Could the seismicity be a sign of the Yellowstone volcano awakening? That's what a lot of people are asking. Seismic activity around Yellowstone supervolcano prompted concerns that something could be brewing towards an activity, a more stronger activity, and even an eruption. Although scientists are certain Yellowstone will not erupt within our lifetime, many still fear that it could happen. One person on Twitter said, God help us if these recent swarms of quakes around Idaho and Utah are harbingers of a Yellowstone supervolcano eruption. Another said, agreed, don't think it will be a full eruption of Yellowstone, hopefully not, but it's looking like that area is heating up. And combined with everything else going on, it would be a total societal collapse and based on the behavior now of over uh, what's happening. Yellowstone earthquake, 2020, others say could see a volcanic eruption. Well, that's what, it, you know, it's because of what's happening in uh, Salt Lake City and, of course, in Idaho. Idaho, we saw, struck by 6.5, April 1st, the beginning of April 1st, and the powerful tremors felt as far as Manitoba in Canada, 500 miles away they were felt. The U.S. Geological Survey recorded 111 earthquakes throughout the region in March, and the University of, uh, only in the park, that's not around Montana and elsewhere. Now, University of Utah seismograph stations located through Yellowstone also detected two earthquake swarms between March 5th and 14 and March 21st and 29. And USGS said the largest event was a minor quake of magnitude 3.1, about five miles north-northwest of Yellowstone, Montana on March 31st. The largest quake swarm occurred about seven miles east-northeast of west uh, Yellowstone, Montana. And the, sw the swarm included 19 earthquakes ranging between 0 and 2.1 magnitude. And the second swarm hit about 9 miles east of West Yellowstone with tremors peaking between 0 0.1 and 1.7 magnitude. USGS said earthquake sequences like these are common and account for roughly 50% of the total seismicity in Yellowstone region, according to uh, Yellowstone uh, alert, the current alert dated uh, April 1st, and Yellowstone earthquake activity remains at background levels, they said. USGS also recorded three eruptions from, from the steamboat geyser in North Geyser Basin on March 6th, 15th, and 25th, for a total of nine eruptions so far this year. USGS also assured that recent earthquakes in Idaho is not a sign of any volcanic activity stirring in Yellowstone. They said it's been an eventful month for seismic activity in the U.S., the western U.S., with the 5.7 magnitude near Salt Lake City, Utah, on March 18, and 6.5 in central Idaho on the night of March 31st towards April 1st. These earthquakes are caused by tectonic extension of the region and are not related to Yellowstone, nor will they have a significant impact on the Yellowstone system. Some strong earthquake in the region, like the 1983 magnitude 6.9 Bora Peak, Idaho, and the 1959 magnitude 7.3 Hebgen Lake earthquakes, 
have impacted geyser behavior, but that is due to the response of the shallow and fragile geyser conduits to shaking. It's not yet clear if the magnitude 6.5 in central Idaho will have a similar impact. Observations of geyser activity over the coming days, two weeks, will answer that question. And USGS also informs people there is no increased seismicity at Yellowstone. Now, as far as the ground deformation, according to um, YVO current alert, the overall def deformation style and rate at Yellowstone remains unchanged since the last update. Subsidence of Yellowstone caldera, which has been ongoing since 2015, continues at an average of about an inch per year with minor fluctuations related to seasonal changes in the area of North, North Geyser Basin. That's where we have Steamboat, of course. GPS data indicate the start of subsidence in September 2019, accumulating about an inch of subsidence to the end of the year. That subsidence paused in early 2020, and no significant changes at Norris have been recorded since the start of the year. Now, we know that we saw the uh, geodesy in a couple of videos back. Uh, yes, subsidence around the... the um, Caldera and the lake, Yellowstone Lake. But around Hebgen Lake, we have inflation. We have Hebgen Lake inflation. And I'll leave the geodesy for you so that you can see on your own. We have inflation at um, GPS station P456. It was going southwest and inflating. I have a mark here on a piece of paper. And also uh, station P458, again inflating and going southwest. And the rest were subsidence around the lake. But Hebgen Lake was inflating and Yellowstone Lake was uh, deflating. So you, can, you have all types of uh, deformations there. So I'll leave links below for you for this. On um, Yellowstone uh, Volcano Observatory and also on uh, from Express, Express UK Sebastian Kepley. Geodesy, and I just want to show you. I'll leave a link below for you for this. All right, North Dakota, Montana, here we are, Wyoming. And this is our area of the Yellowstone. You can see the caldera shape right there. That's it right there around here. It's around here. And uh, let's go to Boise. Now, let's go to Hebgen Lake. You can see it on your own. It, we'll go to Hebgen Lake. Okay. Let's go in a little bit more. Okay, this is Yellowstone Lake. You can see that it's a little bit difficult to see, but that's uh, Yellowstone Lake. There it is. And that Z there, that's Hebgen Lake. All right. Oh, I just missed it. All right, there it is. That's That Z there is Hebgen Lake. And let's go to uh, 458. Okay, you'll see. 458. Come on down. Come on down. Okay. Now, if it goes up, it's going east. So this is not going up. It's going down. It means it's going west. And if it goes up, it goes north. It's not going north. It's going south. So this is going southwest. And it's inflating. It's seasonal, but it's inflating, as you can see. Okay. This is uh, station P458. It's going southwest and it's inflating. Okay, and let's take another one. Let's take this one here, 456. And from what I have from last time, I've noted that it's the same thing. It's going southwest, and again, it's inflating. Okay, so we see that at Hebgen Lake. There it is. And... This is Yellowstone Lake, but that has subsidence. Let's take this one. No, uh, yeah, that's not good. No, we'll take the other one. Okay, that's not good either. Not very good. We'll take the one in the middle. Okay, that's much better. Okay, that's going southwest. South, uh, southwest, and it's basically steady. 
basically steady. I will take this one here. W L Y W. And this one's going all over the place. Inflating, deflating, inflating, deflating, deflating right now. It was inflating 2014, it's deflating right now. So subsidence is what they were saying, as you can see. So weird, weird shapes, but uh, uh, Hebgen Lake is inflating. Okay, that's part, that's part of the super volcano as well. That's where they had the 1959 quake. So I'll leave a link below for you. This has a geodesy for every, every GPS station on, the world, on Earth. And you can check, depending on where you are, what you want to see. And you'll find some uh, nice information there. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.